Well, hello again, everybody. Well, I thought this afternoon I had time for a quick one, but unfortunately the wife said no, so I've come upstairs to make a video instead. So we've got these resistors that we were looking at last time, and uh, I set you a little bit of a quiz to uh, read the resistor value on an analog meter. And I think uh, most of you got it spot on, although I do think there might have been a little bit of cheating going on as well. So uh, yes, you've been uh, you've been noted. But um, so the resistor values we got was. Um, 82 ohm and 220. I think quite a few of you said 80 ohm and uh, yeah that's pretty good. I mean I can't see that we were ever going to get 2 ohm on one of those analogue meters and uh, even the 220. So it kind of shows that back in the day kind of exact tolerance values and stuff like that it was all somewhat of a movable feast wasn't it. So everybody did very well. Well done. But what we bought those resistors for is to make an attenuator or an impedance matching pad. And uh, let me just get the iPad out. So the purpose behind this attenuator stroke matching pad that I'm going to build, it's because I want to be able to connect 50 ohm test gear to 75 ohm input impedances. So it's quite standard for things like, you know, domestic FM radios and, and even TVs and stuff like that. They tend not to use 50 ohm, typically they'll be 75 ohms. If you try to connect your test gear to it you're going to get an impedance mismatch and I've got to admit for most things if you're just trying to feed in a signal from your signal generator generator it'll make absolutely no difference whatsoever it will be absolutely fine but if you actually want to take measurements and stuff like that you do need to take a little bit more care with matching the uh, the input and output impedances because your signal generator is expecting to see a certain impedance at its output terminals and if it doesn't see that in output impedance the, the voltage, uh, the stated voltage at the terminals is going to be wrong. What you've got to do is you've got to make a matching pad. Now you can actually calculate it yourself relatively easily but you know why do the work when you can just go online and use a calculator to do it. So I, I've got my iPad here and I'm using one of these online calculators and I'll leave a link to this calculator in the show notes. And they call it a pi type because uh, if you can see the shape there is a little bit like an upside down U or it's a I guess it also looks like it looks like a pi symbol so that's why they call it a pi attenuator but one of the things about a pi attenuator you can have a different input and output impedance so here I've specified that the input impedance is going to be 50 ohms and the output impedance is going to be 75 ohms so that suits just what we want so all you've got to do is we've got to type in the impedances we want so in my case it's 50 ohms and 75 ohms we're going to choose a 10 ohm dB attenuation factor. You can choose any attenuation factor you want really, but uh, 10 seemed about nice and 10 is a nice number to work with because 10 is 10. Um, the other thing that I've done is, oh, vintage electronic. <laughs> yeah, you've got to make an entrance there, haven't you, Jack? He's just sent me a message there. You press calculate and it will work out the ideal values here. So it's saying that ideally R1 resistor would be 77.107 ohms, R2 would be 87.142 ohms and R3 would be 207.43 ohms. You know, you can't buy these values off the shelf. What you could is you could do combinations of resistors and series and parallel. But I'm not too concerned. I'm not too. I'm not too concerned about getting exact values or exact measurements. So what I want to do is I want to use the next nearest values, and it's kind of prompting here to use 82 ohms, 82 ohms, and 220 ohms. And of course, that's what I've bought. And it shows you here that the uh, the error that we're going to get. So for those values, we're not going to get a 10 dB attenuator. We're going to get a 9.601. We're not going to get exactly 50 ohms, we're going to get 51 ohms, and we're not going to get exactly 75 ohms, we're going to get 64.68. So again, the type of work that I'm doing, exact calibration, exact results aren't necessary. So here's our resistors that we talked about earlier. So there's the 220s, and here's the, uh, the 82 ohms, so we'll put them in. Here's the die cast aluminium boxes that I bought from RS Components. And I just nicked out into the garage early and I've just drilled these and I've drilled them to suit um, these BNC connectors. So not all these BNC connectors are the same. I've got these old ones that look a little bit uh, a little bit grubby, but they are actually silver plated, so I could do with just cleaning them with something. Uh, get some of that jewellery cleaner. In fact, I might go downstairs and see if the wife's getting his silver cleaner. This one is actually 75 ohms. Now, I'm not dead sure about BNC connectors. A lot of people tell me, and certainly I think it is the case, that 
BNCs are slightly different, especially the uh, the female size. And what you can do is you get 50 ohm BNC connectors and you get 75 ohms. Now physically they do seem to fit each other, but I believe if you put, I think it's a 75 ohm and a 50 ohm plug, you can actually spread the uh, the female connectors, you can damage them. But certainly it's something that's been reported to me, but I've never found it to be an actual problem. I'm trying to look inside these connectors to see if I can see any difference and... Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, you're not going to be able to see that on camera. But to me, they look pretty much the same. And if you plug a BNC connector into either of them, it works fine. You can tell me what you think about these BNC connectors. Are they damaged? Are they interchangeable? I've heard so many different stories. I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not sure what the truth is. Now, I said in the earlier video regarding these resistors, the ones I've actually chosen are just classed as carbon composite. And I've chosen these above the standard resistors, which you would commonly might find these days, which are probably something like metal film and you, d you don't see as many uh, carbon composite resistors around as you used to and there's a reason for that and uh, part of the reason is because the manufacturing techniques behind the metal film resistors has changed. Metal film resistors back in the day would be very unsuitable for RF work. They are still unsuitable for perhaps some of your very high frequency applications but not at, typically at the frequencies that I work at. So I could have probably used metal film resistors and it would make no difference. But as it happened, I didn't have the exact values in the metal film resistors either. So as soon as I was going to place an order with RS, I just decided to buy these uh, these carbon composite resistors. Now if I was caring about absolute accuracy, I probably would have got some of these. I would have got double the values and I would have paralleled them up because that would have reduced the uh, the inductance of them. But I didn't do that because uh, I because again, I don't, I don't particularly need to for my application. The other thing I could have done, I could have actually bought something called non-inductive resistors. And I think, I don't know if they also call them planar, planar resistors. Basically, they look like little flat pads. And uh, I have made some test gear using those. I'm going to call them planar resistors. But uh, again, for the accuracies that I'm working at and what I'm trying to do, it, it just isn't worth it. This will work well. <laughs> he said this should work good enough for what I'm trying to do so uh, I think before I assemble that I'm just going to give these a clean acetone it really is a very powerful solvent isn't it I don't actually like acetone I actually generally prefer using IPA I think it I don't know whether it is it just feels a little bit less nasty and it certainly doesn't smell as much but uh, yeah acetone does tend to uh, cut through things cuts through grease and conformal coating and stuff like that. It does cut through it better than IPA does. Okay, so there's our boxes. So what I'll go ahead and do now is I need to uh, try to assemble these. I wish I had some big locking washers to put inside these, but I don't think I have. Um, I'm going to have to see what I can find. Yeah, I'm just looking for some of those, uh, you know, anti-rotation stroke tab washers. And... Uh, yeah, unfortunately I don't think I've got any of the ones I want. It's quite good if you can go get the ones, I don't call them star rings, the ones with little spikes on. In fact there's one there. Yeah, I do have one there. Uh, because when you tighten these up, you want them to try to grab into the aluminium. These have actually got a flat on them, but unfortunately I haven't managed to find a drill that you can drill a hole and it puts a flat on one side. So until I get the correct drill that will put the flat in for me, I have to drill a round hole at the moment, which is quite annoying really. I mean, of course, if I was being really arty-farty, I could have actually drilled it out smaller and then got a file and then rounded it all off. But um, yeah, it sounded like a lot of work, that, to be honest. Turns out that we didn't have any... Uh, any cleaner but for some reason my wife told me that apparently you can use gin to clean silver so uh, I thought I'd give it a try this is kind of a, a waste of Bombay Sapphire I think isn't it well that did bugger all so I've just been in my drawer and I mark up 75 ohms equipment with uh, a red sticker on so I know what it is so uh, so this is a 75 ohm BNC connector so I'm going to put that on there. Now I need to see if I can get a spanner in there or something because otherwise when I try to uh, you know, connect and disconnect my BNC it's just, going to, it's just going to rotate, isn't it? 
I mean, that's a good reason why you really do want to have a little notch uh, filed into the aluminium, why, you know, it's a better way to do it. I'm sure that maybe back in the day you could buy a punch that would put the notch in at the bottom of the connector to stop it spinning. But, yeah, well, unfortunately I don't have one of those punches. Now, I suspect that hardly anybody has as many tools as I do. I'm a real tool whore. And um, it's funny, though, even though I've got hundreds of tools and socket sets and spanners and things like that. I haven't quite got the right tool for the job today, have I? Well, hopefully that'll get it. So there's two 75 ohm connectors fitted. Let's see if we can get the, uh, the 50 ohm ones on now. The new connectors I've got have come with uh, a little tab, what do you call that, a ring, ring crimp, well a ring terminal which slips around the body of them but I'm hoping that I don't need that, I don't think I need to fit it because I'm screwing these connectors into the metal body here of its metal shielded box so I'm hoping that the uh, the box itself is going to be the shield connection well, that's certainly what I'm hoping anyway but again we'll have to, we'll have to see now, I'm sorry about this, I absolutely hate using things like long nose um, pliers to tighten things up. It's a really bodgy way of doing it but uh, it's the only thing I'm going to get in here. Right so I've just soldered in our first resistor which is R2 which is 82 ohms and now I've just got to get the others the right way round so uh, what's R1 is 82 ohms so I'm just going to write that on so I don't forget and then the 82 ohms goes on the 50 ohm side 50 ohm and then the 75 ohm side needs to have, what is it now, let me double check, it needs to have a 220 ohm resistor on it, 220. I think maybe I'll bolt the tab down. Right, so that's the uh, that's the 82 ohm resistor on. So now we've got to uh, put a 220 on the 75 ohm side. Okay, so I've just finished soldering up our first box and uh, this is the 50 ohm connector on this side so I'm going to have to mark that side up as 50 ohms and then we've got the 75 ohms on the other side there. Well, the soldering's not 100% pretty and uh, the assembly could probably be a little bit neater but I'm hoping that that's going to be good enough. So what we'll do is we'll build the other box up and then we'll, uh, we'll test it on the spectrum analyzer, give it a sweep and see what the frequency response is. So as you can see we've gone ahead here and I've finished my two impedance matching boxes. So we've got 50 ohms to 75 and then I've joined both boxes together with this through BNC connector and then we've got 50 ohms out the other side. So 50 to 75 then 75 back to 50. So I've gone ahead and I've labelled them up and I've also put some labels on these boxes here so that we know what the attenuation in is. So my uh, calculated figure for attenuation was 9.61. In a perfect world we would have had a, a 10 dB attenuator but as you saw earlier when I looked at the uh, the resistor calculator that isn't quite the way it comes out with these non-preferred values of resistors which was what was it was it something like 82 ohms and uh, 220 ohms those were the nearest values we could use so that's why we get this 9.6 rather than the 10 dB because it's not a perfect world. So we're expecting this to match between 75 ohms and 50 so let's just check that we've got 75 ohms at this side because we're using resistors so we should have 75 ohms shouldn't we? Let's just check that. Oh 96 ohms that doesn't look anything like 75 so that's not very good is it? Well there's a bit of a trap there because 
these boxes are obviously they're designed to feed into something so this is 75 ohm and it's designed to feed into a 50 ohm load so we actually need to terminate the box itself in its characteristic impedance so I've got one of these little stubby terminators here so let me just double check that I think this is 50 ohms but I will double check it okay so what does that say 51 well not exactly 50 ohms but close enough and let's plug that into here and hopefully we should get a figure a bit closer to 75 and we